This week on the pole barn build, we plan on making some huge progress. We have to rebrace some of the poles that we did in the last episode due to some crazy weather that came in, but hopefully we'll get the rest of the poles all stood up, including the shed roof poles, and start assembling some of the roof system. This is gonna mark the top of the second header. I'm heavier than that 25. After this thunderstorms, all our holes for the last poles that we we're gonna stand up filled up with mud. So luckily I got my helper out today, Nick, and I got my two boys. So our plan today is to run these strings up top. That way we can line our telephone poles up and we're gonna set four telephone poles, get those concreted in. Hopefully we can get them braced off good enough where they stay plumb. And then we're gonna start wrapping the header on this build. Let's get to work. Now we used our DIY boom lift on our tractor to set these telephone poles as well. They are very heavy so I kind of had everybody stand clear. But they did go in pretty easy and we're using these to span the 20 foot gap right here from each telephone pole. And I've had these laying around for a couple years just waiting for the right job to use them on and this worked out perfect. They lined up on the string line, you can see up top, they're barely touching the string line. So that'll be perfect to recess the header mount or you know saddle, I guess, the header saddle on the poles. We got two more to go on this side and the center part will be almost roughed in and done. We're using the string lines up top to make sure the telephone poles sit where they need to go. Really just the saddle location for the header is what we're trying to get in plane with the six buys on the front and back of the barn. Because the telephone poles just vary so much in size and shape and they also taper to the top, we're not so worried about where the base sits as much as the top saddle location needs to sit in line with the front and back six buys. All the poles lined up perfectly. We got them all braced out and I just had my boys go behind us and put about two bags of concrete in each hole. Also, we did use a six inch cookie in the bottom of these holes. I forgot to get any video footage of it, about three feet deep. So the poles are actually sitting on top of that. And then we added the two bags of concrete around it. These are the four by sixes we're running on the outsides for the shed roof. So they're going three feet down as well with a couple bags of concrete in each hole. So after all the poles went vertical, I used my Bosch laser level and I waited till the sun went down a little bit so I can see the line and I marked a constant level line on every pole. And once we had our level line on every pole, I came up with all the measurements on the header height. This will locate the outer header and then we have the two inner headers on the main beam. And this is just uh, some measurements I came up with off the reference laser line that I marked on all the poles. And this will set everything to the same height. For the big 20 foot span, we're running a double two by 10. And we're gonna use some uh, knee braces on that. So I'm gonna use some four by four knee braces and probably come in about four feet on the two by 10 header. And then that way it'll be more of like a 12 foot span and we're running our trusses every five feet. So we're gonna make this beam right here, slap two of these together, cut it to length, get it up in position.
first full header is up. I got Nick going around. He's going to square off the lines. So we're going to run this line. Our marker that was on the main pole, we ran it all the way out level to our 4x6 outer poles. We're going to run that line all the way down, bolt our header on that, and that'll catch the bottom of the rafter, and then that'll be the shed roof side. So we got our post cut to length on the top on the outer shed header. Now Nick's up there on the first header. We are hanging our, our Simpson uh, rafter brackets and we're just gonna measure every two feet all the way down, put these in place, and then we'll just pop the rafters up and let them float over this end, square the building up, and then we'll tie these rafters in right here. doing the uh, second one now hanging these joist hangers has definitely been one of the slower slower sections of this build nick back here prefers to hammer them by hand i prefer the framing nail method but working on each end and meeting in the middle So all the joist hangers are in on our header. We did use a string line per our measurement on both ends, pull the tight string. That way, in case the header has any variation going throughout, this will make up that difference with the string because we know we will have a straight line where the rafters touch this header right here. We have all the raptor locations marked on our outer header. Now we're just gonna put up these Simpson strong ties and bolt them all in. So once we got the telephone poles up, they vary in size a lot as they taper when they're going up. So once the top header gets on and we're about to set the truss, we'll kind of pull those in or out as needed. But right now, just to keep them plumb, we're using the, these cross straps. These are great, so I'm gonna run it to the top. And the bottoms are concreted in, so I'm just gonna use the bottom anchors and then take it to the top. We'll pull them together as needed and get it kind of close. Like I said, we'll have to reset it or adjust it once the trusses go on top. Another build day guys and I finally listened to the wife on this one and hired my buddy Nick to help as you guys have seen. The speed and the process of the build so far has like quadrupled. So super excited about where we are in this build so far. Today's goal is going to be get the rest of the joist hangers up on the shed roof and get this last header, this double beam header tied in up top. When we put this outer header up, we kind of killed our ability to lift that top beam of the tractor. To possibly reach from the outside, we could do a triple two by six by 16. It definitely can't reach. It was almost maxed out with, with that lower one. Mm -hmm. Put the rest of those hangers up and then we can start cutting rafters. Then once we get that done, then we'll do the top beams. Okay. That's when I figure we can get the tractor in here and make that triple beam. <laughs> And when we're laying out these rafters to be cut, we're always gonna check for the crown. We want the crown to face up, especially when using on a roof. That way, when the weight of the roof gets installed, if it does settle, it'll go back to level. And to tie our first rafter in on the front side of the six by, we're just gonna use a four inch rectangle gusset plate.
It's a hot one today, fellas, but check it out. We got one side of the shed, shed roof done. All these raptors popped up pretty easy. Nailed everything on the hangers. Man, it worked out perfect. I left the tail inside free. I didn't tie these uh, straps in up here. That way, like I said before, when we go to square the top of the building, we'll have a little bit of slack. Or these, the tail ends will be movable so they can pull in and out depending on getting this square. And once this is square, like I said, the trusses are set, we'll lock all those down. So we got one side left on the shed roofs, but man, it is looking like a barn. Holy moly. Now we're gonna throw some two by sixes up there just off the header, that way we can walk up there. And then we'll get our measurements, pull our strings and cut our saddles on the post for the top header. Oh yeah, the hand, that handrail, huge. I'm sure. <laughs> Even just the, the look of it. Just. <laughs> All right, so y'all just saw us notch the other side of those posts. This is exactly what we're doing. We're laying our height with a string. We're setting it right at 36 inches off this bottom header. This is gonna mark the top of the second header. So now we're just gonna measure nine and a half inches so we can get that saddle width to hold a two by 10. I'm gonna go uh, one two by depth on these six by poles and then the telephone poles, I'll show you what I'm gonna do with those in a minute because they do taper at the top. So you kind of have to get a little creative when making that saddle. So for this one, I'm gonna use a circle saw so I get a straight cut on the top line and the bottom line, and then we'll get the middle section with a chainsaw. So we got a nice straight cut on the top and bottom, and then we can just chisel this center section out. The end post, you have to remember, we're gonna leave these full length for now because our truss system on the outside the two gable ends will bolt right to the end of these boards or the post and the center sections will cut the tops off right at 36 inches because the trusses will sit right on top of the header So we marked our measurements on each end post and so now we're just going to run the string line. We're not going to measure too much because we know this string line is going to be level. But the only issue with these telephone poles because they are tapered, you kind of have to adjust this header a little bit in or out because your telephone pole is not going to be a straight line going up. So what I'm going to do is run a level from the bottom of my header and then I will just use the level to mark a vertical level line and then I know that will be the back side of the saddle cut for this header. So we're gonna do the same thing here, cut it on top and bottom with a circle saw, and then we're gonna get the middle section with a chainsaw.
So you remember we raised the six, six by six post with a four by four and the tractor as a boom extension. So because we did the shed roofs on there now, we're not gonna be able to have enough reach to go over the shed roofs. So I'm gonna try and go up to the center, raise these uh, last 20 foot beams the same way, but to get a little bit of extra length, I'm gonna use three two by sixes. These are 16 feet long, so we're gonna screw all these together and make a longer tractor beam. And hopefully this will work and help us raise these into position. going to work. I'm a, I'm a believer. She going to work. We're going to find out. I mean, I'm, I'm heavier than that 20 by for sure. That's 185 right there. Didn't know what that 20 by is probably. Yeah, let's try two one now. <laughs> <laughs> you might be exceeding the limit. <laughs> I think farmers all across America are gonna be like, I'm going to Home Depot, babe, to get some 16 foot two bys. I'm gonna make a boom lift for my tractor. That's right. I'm not picking up anything ever again. Inspiration. Perfecto. All right, that turned out to be a heck of a last work day. We got the final header in for the top. So all the rough framing, our poles are up. We got the rafters done for the shed roof. And like I said, the double headers, top and bottom, they are complete. The rain shut us down though. Um, but yeah, that was an awesome work week. Thank you all for watching. Stay tuned next week. We're gonna start putting together the roof system. So we'll get the purlins on our shed roofs. We'll get our engineer trusses set up and get them up top. And I got an awesome idea about how we're gonna raise those up there. So you guys stay tuned, like, and subscribe. And we will see you next week for another work week on this barn build project. Thank you guys. We'll see you.